Hello everyone, uh, we are here today to discover how does position-based dynamics works for Niagara. Um, first thing, uh, you need to download the content example that uh, is for free on the marketplace. And uh, once you have downloaded, you can find uh, in, the, in the map Niagara Advanced Particles the position-based dynamics and you can migrate to your project. Once you, has, you have migrated to your project, you will have this position-based dynamics. You duplicate it and you call position-based dynamic test and you open it. Okay, once you open it, uh, you have this uh, position-based dynamics uh, Niagara effect. Uh, first thing, we want to change the material of the balls. So uh, we go in Mesh Renderer, we go here in Ball Material, and you change it with uh, your uh, material. You can also change the mesh if you want. We will not change it right now. So we will put uh, these materials we build uh, from scratch, uh, this one. Okay, and we save. Then, how does this work? Um, you have a neighbor grid, so you can visualize your neighbor grid by clicking here. So here you will visualize it. And you can change the dimension of the neighbor grid. To test this out, we will put this in scene. Okay. This, and we want here like this okay uh, now we want to change this uh, this grid to be way way bigger you can change in uh, the the system uh, the Niagara system sets so here we want to extend the grid like 5000 per 5000 okay and uh, here um, you can uh, set how many uh, interaction you want to have per uh, cell of this grid. So we would like to have a lot because we're going to we're going to spawn a lot of particles. So we set it to let's say one thousand. Okay. Don't go too high or it will lag a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, once we set it, we want to put some dynamics going on. So uh, we don't want uh, the spawn burst instantaneous, but we want uh, the spawn rate like this. I want to place it like 500. Okay. Now they are all attracted to the point force. So we can just delete this attraction force. Okay. Uh, and uh, we want to delete uh, the drag. We don't want drag. Okay. Uh, now we want to add uh, some gravity. Gravity force. Okay, perfect. Uh, we want, uh, as you can see now, the gravity is not affected too much uh, because uh, uh, there is uh, soul force and velocity that has a speed limit. So here we want to remove it. Okay. But now what's the problem here is that uh, um, the initial force uh, is a little bit higher and we want to add some velocity. So to do that, uh, we just go here, we just go add velocity. Okay, uh, we want this uh, to be in cone, so we will add velocity in cone. And we want to add uh, like a fun thing, so we just go one on the z-axis. Z okay, as you can see now, We have our system working. 
let's uh, deactivate uh, the neighbor grid okay right now as you can see sometime it spawn uh, too much on the um, on the z axis to fix this we want to kind of have a velocity limit when the particle spawn to do that we just put a curve plot from curve okay perfect just decrease right now the number so we don't have all this like when we change thing okay uh, and here we want uh, this uh, to be like uh, 1000 as we previously put okay and we want this uh, to happen like not at the end but at 0.1 of our simulation okay as you can see now they start uh, uh, slower and then they get uh, at 0.1 of the simulation uh, the the correct limit now 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 uh, we don't want this to be in shape location okay and we want to add some more velocity let's say like okay cool now now we want this uh, uh, to be different size so to do that uh, we need uh, let's do like this um, here we calculate uh, the mesh scale size so uh, here we say uh, plot vector from plot so we convert it to be proportionate and then we say random range float random range float like this and this is because zero is uh, no scale at all so like two and here is four okay now as you can see we have different size of the particles okay uh, right now we want to add some random colors to it so color mode here direct set we say random range linear color okay let's say minimum let's go with some like uh, not this one okay this bluish then away dark blue like this cool okay um now we want the particle to start uh, small and when they die they return small to do that we go just here we go scale mesh size okay uh we say uh float vector from plot to be always the same size and here we go uh, to curve, plot from curve. Okay, now we want this to be zero. Sorry. Okay, uh, let's start with maybe with this one. Okay, and then here we put uh, one here, one. Okay, and this one zero okay this is linear we don't want this to be linear we just just want to be like this so we have some kind of scaling okay perfect now 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 they are just flowing it down Maybe this is because of our soft, soft force and velocity. With this, maybe we want to be start from 
500. Okay. Okay, okay. Better. Okay. Uh, now, how do we want this to be even cool? Let's say like this. Let's go way up. Cool. Okay, now the bounce seems to be way too high. So we go on collision, go restitution like 0 0.3. Cool, very, very cool. Okay, now if you like, uh, okay, if you don't see it, as you can see, when you go like too much out of view, this is because of the bounds of the mesh, the bounds of the particle system, sorry. So here you can see it. So when you stop seeing it, it's because uh, it's not gonna be rendered. So to increase that, you can just go on properties, pixel bounds, you go like 5,000 here, 5,000 here, 5,000 here, 5,000 here, 5,000 here, 5,000 here. 5, very very cool and then you, as you can see if i go here i can still see it okay they are rolling cool okay now let's make the final tweak we want this to cast shadow so you select your emitter, you go here, you go cast shadow, activate it, and now you have also shadows. Cool. Um, I want this to maybe be like uh, start sooner, be 100% scale. Okay, this is a little bit more chaotic. This is cool. 